podium, just please state your name and address when you do come forward. And at this time, we would like to approve the consent agenda, which is items number one through five. And Denise, if you could please read those. Yes, Madam Chair. Item one is approval of the May 6, 2015 minutes of the regular meeting. Item two is May Platts. Item three, 2543-2015 rezone from the C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar and I-1 light industrial districts to the downtown planned unit development for allowed forms located north of East 8th Street and east and west of North Weber Avenue. Item four, 2709-2015 rezone from the RD2 townhome residential suburban district to the I-1 light industrial district for allowed forms located at 504 South McNally Avenue. Item five. 2729-2015 rezone from the AG Agricultural District to the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential District for allowed forms located west of South Enfield Avenue and south of East 41st Street. All right, thank you, Denise. Are there anyone in the audience here who have any objections to items number one through five on the consent agenda? All right, seeing none. Are there any commissioners that have any questions in regards to items number one through five? Move for approval. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items number one through five. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the items number one through five have passed. If you're here for any of those items, you're free to leave at this time. Now we need a motion to approve the regular agenda. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Madam Chair, I'd like to make an amendment. I'd like to uh, defer items 14 and 15 of the regular agenda, please. All right, we have a motion to defer items number 14 and 15. I need a second. I'll second that. And then now we will vote on the deferral. All in favor, signify by saying yes. Vote on the amendment first. Amendment. Yep. We'll vote on the Amendment to the regular agenda, excuse me. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. And now we will vote on the regular agenda as amended. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the regular agenda has been approved. Item six, 2341-2015 rezone from the RS single family residential suburban and RD1 twin home duplex residential suburban districts to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District for allowed forms located at 504 and 604 South Hillview Road. Good evening, Diane DeCoyer with planning staff. Again, the property is located at 504 and 604 South Hillview Road, which is south of the East Arrowhead Parkway and west of South Foss Avenue. The applicant, Bryant Soberg, is proposing to rezone 1.75 acres from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential and RS Single Family Residential District to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District for commercial development. The applicant is planning to demolish the existing homes and prepare the property for development. The parcel will be combi combined with the five existing C2 commercial parcels to the north and east of this development. Uh, these parcels have frontage onto a type one arterial street, which is East Arrowhead Parkway. Due to the adjacency to the south and west of single family homes, the applicant will be required to provide a level C buffer yard. A level C includes a 30 foot setback with a four foot high berm or a six foot tall fence and 40 units of landscaping per 100 lineal feet. The property owner could take a 10 foot encroachment into the buffer yard due to their parking lot, but the applicant has instead decided to exceed minimum standards and provide a 30 foot buffer yard and a 10 foot easement for the homeowner to the south. The 10 foot easement will allow the homeowner to the south to access their garage to the back. No access will be allowed from these parcels to Arrowhead Parkway. Access needs to come 
by Hillview and Foss Avenue. With redevelopment, urban street improvements may be required on Hillview adjacent to this development. The applicant should expect to provide a traffic impact study for the redevelopment. This would be required before a building permit could be approved. Per the Foss Avenue traffic impact study, additional lanes and right of way are needed at Foss Avenue. If the rezoning of this property is approved, the applicant can construct retail structures up to 25,000 square feet along an arterial. If the rezoning is denied, the parcel will continue to be rezoned RD1 and twin homes would be allowed to be constructed. Planning staff held a neighborhood meeting to review the project a few weeks ago. Jeff Schmidt was uh, the planner available at that time and can answer any questions you might have tonight regarding that. During previous public meetings, the opposition to the rezoning was in regards to the traffic impact along Arrowhead and Hillview. Based upon the site plan, traffic engineering comments, and the forms allowed, the traffic impact shall be directed away from the lower intensity uses. Because the subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan, approval of this rezoning would be acceptable. I can answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Diane. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, is the applicant here? Please come forward and state your name and address. Erica Beck, uh, representing Lloyd Companies and the ownership group for this parcel. The address is 101 South Reed Street in Sioux Falls. Um, again, uh, I am here representing the ownership group Common Land 2, of which are in the audience as well. So if you have any questions for them, they'd be more than happy to come up and, and talk a little bit more about uh, their interest in this project. I just wanted to go over um, a few points um, that we tried to make in a memo to you uh, earlier this week in regards to the interest that the ownership group has in the property. Um, they've owned this property for probably over a decade and have uh, maintained really uh, great relationships with adjacent property owners during that time. Um, they've done a lot of improvements to the existing property and have continually worked on growing their vision for what they feel like would be a great neighborhood uh, oriented retail development in this area. Um, over the last year, they've had a lot of discussions with the uh, property owner in question of whom they recently purchased the property from. Um, and they've utilized that opportunity to come before you over the past several months and talk about uh, rezoning for that property to accommodate uh, potential development, of which you'll see a site plan laid out for um, as well. We have done a lot of work on the site plan to try to identify what some of the opportunities could look like as far as a retail development, understanding that that of course can change in the future based upon um, tenants and such, but we feel very confident that at this time, as far as the elevation goes, we're very um, much working with this site plan in terms of what we can provide to the adjacent property owner to the south um, for different types of access that he needs for his property. I'm gonna back up just a little bit um, again and talk about the last couple of months in terms of where we've gone and the types of meetings that we've had. Um, in September of last year, actually this group, this ownership group, um, before working with Lloyd Companies was here to um, rezone a piece of property that's actually in question or actually was rezoned um, through Shape Places um, to a residential property as well and they rezoned that to C2. Um, then at the end of last year, they were able to get the property that we're talking about tonight under contract with the owner at the time um, and wanted to move forward uh, with a C2 rezoning as well uh, given that a portion of that property was zoned commercial prior to shape places as well. Um, during that time frame, they had been working with uh, the adjacent property owner, uh, Mr. Berg and his wife on uh, doing so because both of those groups had rezoning applications moving forward at the same time, even though they were on different sides of the neighborhood. Um, they've always had a great relationship, at least they feel, with Mr. Berg and have uh, tried to make some accommodations to um, ensure that he has the same quality of life moving forward after this project uh, as he does today. And one of the concerns that they heard loud and clear from Mr. Berg and his wife was that their current situation um, is such that they 
utilize a driveway that's about 20 feet in width. Half of that driveway exists on their property and half exists on the common land to ownership. And so they were um, very accommodating in ensuring that there is a cross easement provided so that Mr. Berg and his wife can have access to that driveway in the future as well. Um, in doing so, uh, we, on the site plan, if you can go back to that, Jason, in doing that, we provided an extra 30 foot past that cross easement. Um, so there's a total of 40 foot buffer there, at least on uh, the west end of the property for Mr. Berg and his wife. And then on the east side of the property, there's a total of 30 foot, which is required by um, the city as far as a buffer goes. Um, in terms of other considerations, the ownership group has been uh, very willing to make sure that they provide in excess um, the number of landscape units that are required by, by the city and even work with the adjacent property owners on the species that are going to be planted so that they can just ensure that they continue moving forward with those neighborly relations. Uh, one of the other things that I think is important to point out as far as the elevation goes, and you can kind of see that at the bottom of the screen, um, the way that the topography exists on the site right now, uh, we originally had thought, well, it'd be a great idea to put um, the drainage pond toward the back end of the site, but the site slopes toward Foss and Arrowhead Parkway. So um, we moved the pond in that direction. And as a result of that, we'll have to probably construct an, at least an eight foot, if not 10 foot high retaining wall along that back corner, which I think ultimately helps with um, the buffering toward the adjacent property owner's um, site, just because any sort of uh, cars that are parking in that back area, they will be abutting that retaining wall and won't really have their headlights yet, you know, um, encroaching upon his property. And then on top of that wall, there will be a landscape buffer as well. So I, th I feel like it's a really good site plan from that perspective and because it's taking into consideration the adjacent property owners. Um, and I think what's probably often missed with these types of projects is that it's really gonna clean up the site um, to a greater extent. And ideally, and Raquel actually, uh, Blount is here as well from Lloyd Companies, but I know she hears often from different groups that you know a lot of times neighborhoods want these types of developments because it, it helps them in creating more of those neighborhood services that um, we used to have within a smaller community and we're trying to get back to again. So. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have um, in relation to the types of discussions that we've had with the property owners and, and specifically Mr. Berg and his wife as well. Um, otherwise, any questions that you have about the site plan, I'd be happy to address. All right, thank you, Erica. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Uh, the yellow area, that's where the driveway is, right? The Correct. Yeah. That is the 10-foot uh, cross easement that will be provided on this property owner's site. Any other questions? All right. Madam Chair, oh, yes. excuse me, I do have one. I noted from the presentation that uh, the two homes are going to be demolished. Was there ever any consideration in the process of saving those homes, knowing that Sioux Falls really needs affordable housing? Was there any thought given that to that possibility at all? You know, that's a great question, and I can't actually answer that for you. I would probably ask the property owners, the current property owners, to, to answer that. Hello. Hi. Uh, Brian Soberg, uh, 330 North Main, number 201 in Sioux Falls. And to answer your question, um, no, we haven't considered that because of it really, especially that middle house there that you can see, um, yeah, that one, it's really quite small. Um, and it doesn't lend itself to, you know, trying to get some commercial property, you know, closer to the north that really, I mean, really helps to remove the houses. So we didn't, you know, we did originally a little bit, but it just wouldn't work for us, so. Anything else? No. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, thanks, Erica. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? Please come forward and state your name and address. I'm uh, Jerry Berg, and uh, I'm the property owner just to the south of uh, the two pieces right there in regarding um, 
the driveway. That would be one of the concessions that they've uh, granted me. <clears throat> My contention is that, um, first of all, I've lived there for 37 years and the idea of coming that deep into the neighborhood is not something that I'm particularly fond of. Um, originally, uh, when I was first talking with the same neighbor that sold the property, they were trying to figure out whether she would sell this to North piece or both pieces and ultimately to, um, um, you know, make her investment pay off in her retirement, she decided on both. And uh, so then the talk was of the fact that they weren't gonna demolish her house, but just uh, perhaps rezone obviously the North one and maybe the back half. And so um, during the course of the conversation, it became obvious that they were gonna get rid of her house also. So consequently, they're, uh, instead of RD1 going to C2, they're taking a residential property and going to C2. And so um, although the house that Bryant was talking about is in disrepair, her house uh, is a very nice house. And um, you know, her property needs a little bit of upkeep because, you know, trees and so forth because of her plans to uh, um, move on. And so my contention is, is that um, coming that deep into the neighborhood is um, a problem for me. I do appreciate the concession and uh, we get along quite nicely with the group. So it's not like it's con huge contention but taking it a step farther, if we could go to their proposed plan, um, <clears throat> two things happen. One, um, from my perspective, living right next door, my, uh, my uh, drive to Walmart, which is already a short drive, instead of going to Arrowhead, I'm gonna use their, their uh, parking lot as a uh, thoroughfare. And I do believe that that's what anybody coming from the southeast or that can figure out going on Arrowhead is a pain um, that they'll come through the back way and, and uh, come through there. I own uh, <clears throat> right across from that driveway, there's two houses that I have purchased over the past 10, 15 years. And uh, so they're going to be removing uh, some of the dirt and moving it all to the northeast. So that'll be lower uh, as far as she had mentioned you know, where the lights would be in regards to my house in that parking lot. So now anybody leaving that parking lot, the lights are going up and obviously into my neighbor's, you know, my tenant's house. So um, <clears throat> the things I see right off the bat are the thoroughfare and, and just the way that it's laid out. I'm absolutely not opposed to developing the property. And uh, so that's not any part of my argument. It's just coming that far into the neighborhood and the, you know, I'm not a designer, so I don't know what a better plan would be, but I think there's a better plan out there someplace, so. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Berg? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this item? Thank you. Um, Tim Weaker, 613 South Hillview Road. Uh, my property would be on the west side and from the corner, um, one property to the south. So if you can imagine, I'm probably about 120 feet from the driveway. Um, my concerns are with the development coming that far back. I also don't have any problems with commercial development and the commercial development in that area. Um, as you look from Chopco all the way out, the buildings that have been put in that area are running a lot shorter distance back. The restaurant that just went in across the street, the Panda Express, the Culver's, the other side, those are all, I guess you'd call them short distance um, areas and I think it, it's something that still can be accomplished with allowing us a little bit more buffer. Um, as you read through some of the stuff in the Shapes Who Falls, you know, they, they, they talk a lot about if you're gonna be going from a residential to a commercial, some type of a transition and possibly a soft transition. 
And I don't see this as being one that's doing that. It's basically we're going from today we've got our houses and tomorrow, guess what? We're looking right into the back of a retail establishment. I mean, and I do agree from just living in the area that um, Lloyd Companies does a great job. I mean, the stuff they put in out there is very nice. It's just, it's it's something going in very, very close. I mean, it, it gets a little harder to handle. So that's, I guess, the biggest concern. The second biggest would be the traffic. Um, Hillview is a very narrow road. Mm -hmm. um, it's a development that still has one acre lots, so it kind of gives you some country living inside the city limits at a cost that's considerably less than if you had to go out and buy a, an acre now. So it's kind of, in a way, going to be taking away a lot of that. You'll get people that will probably move out and it will turn into more probably rental property or something like that. And when I moved there 10 years ago, I seek that out. And I am I know there are only a couple areas of Sioux Falls left that still have that ability. So I guess I'm hoping that there's something done there to help that transition be slower. That farthest south lot still has a residential zoning on the front of it. And I mean, even that would make it a lot better for us. It pushes the driveway further to the front. It gives a buffer for us. We've been a little bit more quiet beforehand. Surprisingly, with Walmart next door, it isn't bad living there. I mean, with the old mature trees and stuff like that, it's easy to get along with those type of tenants. It's just this one's going to be putting it right in our yards. So I guess that's my concern. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this item? I'm Cheryl Colbreck. I live at 709 South Hillview Road. And I think I'm just here to kind of reiterate the traffic issues. I don't know if um, any of you have had an opportunity to be on East Arrowhead Road on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, trying to get off of Hillview, you don't. You absolutely do not get onto Arrowhead Parkway. And so I'm really concerned about people who will take that short path through the parking lot taking Hillview rather than waiting for the stoplights or trying to get on to um, Foss Road. So I'm not, again, just like everyone else, I'm not opposed to development. I am greatly concerned about the traffic and the uh, increased traffic that will come down Hillview. Um, yeah. Concerned about um, the small road, as already has been said, and that uh, there's little kids that live around there and they're riding their bikes. and. Now we're kind of asking and inviting people to take that road as another access way out of the area. So all right. that's all my concerns are. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, is there anyone else that has anything maybe new to add or comment on this item? I'm Fern Getting and I live at 705 Hillary Road. And my concern is in the very near future when this little narrow road we have now doesn't accommodate that traffic, then they're gonna say, well, we need to widen the road or something. They're gonna be right on top of our houses because the houses are not back that far now. All right. So I'm wondering in the future, mm -hmm. it's gonna cause a lot of problems. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for Expressing your concern. One more here. Good evening. One more. I'm Ryan Tisdall. Um, while I'm not actively involved in this project in any way, I do own property in this general area, just north of here. And I guess I'd point out a couple points. The first being when this issue first came to the Planning Commission couple months back, I actually had a very identical issue at that same meeting that was approved by the planning commission there and then approved by the city council. Um, and a few months back, a very similar project on the, just the west in the same neighborhood was approved by the planning commission and then the city council to rezone for commercial use um, and it was actually Mr. Berg, who was the applicant on that, which was approved, and his access is off the side streets. 
exactly how this is planned. And I guess the point I would make just as a property owner in this area would be my understanding of the planning commission is to vote on is this an appropriate use of this land for the intended and I guess I'd look across the nation at the main entrance to a Walmart and in my head is that logical land for commercial development and in my mind that would be yes. Thank you. All right. Anyone else here? All right, commissioners, any any discussion or a motion? Madam Chair, motion to approve for discussion. We have a second. Motion. And a second discussion. Well, first of all, I think uh, having the site plan was very helpful uh, to me to understand what the intended use of this was. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me to take the obviously the primary drive off of uh, FOSS makes a lot of sense. Uh, for safety, you want to have a second access, which makes some sense. And this, this appears to be very much kind of in the back corner. So I think that the site plan has tried to mitigate uh, the apparent issue that we've heard from the neighborhood. Um, and ultimately, having all the buffer around here, uh, it is required by Shape Sioux Falls, and it is another, yet another good example of how Shape Sioux Falls protects those more abrupt transitions that we do try to uh, be cognizant of as we approve these kinds of things. But in this case, uh, since it is a little more of a abrupt transition, uh, having that extra 30-foot buffer yard really helps a great deal. And I think this project makes a lot of sense. And the rezoning of this makes some sense considering all the rest of the commercial that's in the area. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Um, maybe somebody else was more familiar with this area. Is, is there a stoplight at Foss in Arrowhead? I mean, any of the commissioners know it? Yeah, yeah I believe there is. So I believe there, there is? is. Yeah. And we, they say there was a traffic study done. Was there, how far? I guess the distance, I was hard to tell, is where is Highland? Do you want staff to come up and comment yeah. on the traffic? Yeah. Or he'll do. How far is he'll do? Jeff from the stoplight? from the city planning office. Jeff, how far do you know is, is he'll do from the existing stoplight on Foss and Arrowhead? Um, it's probably 500 or 600 feet. Okay. And during the study, do you know, was there any talk about another light at Hillview? No, there is not a light at Hillview. During the, the neighborhood meeting that we had in this room with the neighbors, um, the Arrowhead Parkway seems to be a lot of the issues. I mean, it is a very busy street. It's an arterial street, very much like 41st Street on the west side of town, um, has the same type of traffic volumes. And so they are struggling to get out of the neighborhood. We discussed at the neighborhood meeting, I went back to the traffic engineer, Heath, that's talked to this group before, planning commissioners, and they're designing Arrowhead Parkway in 2016 with improvements scheduled for 2017 to improve Arrowhead Parkway. And they'll look at a new traffic signal out here. It's probably going to be on Gordon Avenue, the um, Collector Street on the west, which is where the other commercial development is that you've already approved. So the neighborhood concerns at the meeting I had here were, well, that made the people on Gordon mad. And I understand that, but I mean, you could put the signal on Hillview, which will make the people on Hillview mad. But that's what happens when you have a grid network in Sioux Falls. One of the streets is going to get a signal in order to get out. But if you want to be able to have a traffic signal to get out of your neighborhood, someone needs a signal. So it go basically, um, it goes uh, Sycamore Avenue, then it goes Gordon, Foss, Highway 11. Okay. Thank yep. you. Jeff. Yes, the sir. Traffic study. Yeah, has there been a traffic study done, or no, is just the engineer making comments? The traffic engineer was making comments about Arrowhead Parkway, which will be designed in 2016, constructed in 17. They asked the commercial developers out here, the ones that you already approved, and this one, and they said we need a traffic study to see if there's any impacts from your development. There hasn't been a study done yet for this project. Correct. Very good. Very good. And again, just to reiterate, we need to have a traffic study done before, and it has to be complied with before a permit could be issued. For before a building permit for either one of the projects, correct. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yep. 
All right. Thank, thank you, you, Jeff. Any other discussion? I think Ryan made a great point of we've approved a couple projects in the area that we're in the same, you know, boat as what we're looking at right here. And to me, it looks like, you know, the developer and the owner of, of this property have made a, you know, try to work with them to, you know, take care of some of the stuff that's going to be coming from the opposite property. And I think they've done pretty well. All right. Thank you. We have no more discussion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item 7, 2454-2015 rezone from the RS single family residential, suburban and RD1 twin home duplex residential, suburban districts to the RD1 twin home townhome residential, suburban and RD2 townhome residential, suburban districts for allowed forms located east and west of North Pennsylvania Avenue and south of West 54th Street North. Uh, Jason Bieber with Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application by Richard Brake. Richard Brake uh, to construct some fourplex units on the east side of uh, South, Pen or excuse me, North Pennsylvania Avenue, and then rezone some single family and construct some twin homes on the west side of North Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, the proposed uh, twin and townhomes will have access to North Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, further, a secondary fire access will be required um, at West uh, 54th Street North uh, once the development gets uh, 30 new uh, dwelling units in it. Uh, the subject property is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. The proposed RD2 townhome residential and the RD1 twin home duplex residential will provide a good transition uh, to the existing RA2 apartment residential uses to the east. Um, and then, and of the proposed RD2, then transitioning to the proposed RD1 west of North Pennsylvania Avenue, and then finally connecting into the existing RS single family uses to the west and uh, southwest of this proposed application. And because the subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan, staff does recommend approval of this rezoning. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, thanks, Jason. Commissioners, any questions for staff? All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? And if you are, please come forward. Yes, I'm Richard Brake. I live at 1510 uh, South Raymond Circle. Um, this was in front of uh, the board last month, but I deferred it. I was happy to be out of town. And when I was checking in with Jason to see if there was any uh, neighbors that called in, there was, I think, one or two. So I've got, I got, um, their name and number, and then um, actually one of the gals that's the adjoining landowner to the west helped me organize a neighborhood meeting. So um, that's why I deferred it till I could get back to, to get that done. So we performed that last uh, Thursday evening at seven o'clock, and I had probably, I believe, six of the adjoining landowners sporadically through on Ohio Avenue there show up, and I think one was down on uh, uh, Colgill Drive. Um, their concern was they, on West Pennsylvania Circle, they didn't want anything of the nature that is up on 54th Street and Marion Road, double-decker fourplexes. And I explained to them that, that I was only gonna look at a, a twin home layout in that RD on the, on the circle itself. So once I explained that and, and explained that chances are they'd be slab on grade for, you know, for the baby boomers, then they, they thought that was, that was okay. They were glad to hear that. They just didn't want, I mean, they've had such a view for so many years that in those houses that those people live in, they've got gardens, so they sit up a little higher. So that was probably their, their most concern. They just had some questions about architectural effect and, you know, and how, how it was gonna lay out. And, and I told them it's just a concept, um, you know, whether, whether a person would go ahead with those twin homes or just build some multi and or single family, but wanted to kind of leave some options open for the partnership that I represent. So, but they all left there with, I think their questions answered and, and I invited them to show up tonight, but I don't see anybody here. All right. 
proposal. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Madam Chair. Richard, you've got, uh, looks like four lots that sit off by themselves on Pennsylvania. Do you know to the east across the street, is, though, is that developed? Are there houses on those lots across the street? No, actually there's four lots there, but the north lot next to that drainage way, the city purchased, purchased that um, from the bank when they had this property and they have scheduled a bike trail connection there. So the, the other three- Lots to the east of you, yes. those four lots. Yes, those there. other three lots would be like twin home. Thank you. Nature. All right, thank you. What, ooh, you can see the drainage way that goes north and west there and then it comes down to a major drainage way just to the west of Career. That's a future city park there. So we have all that park land and you can kind of see the drainage way there um, if you really squint. But, so we're gonna bring that residential neighborhood in with a bike trail into that drainage way and then you can go north and south all the way through there and have a, a lineal park. So Rick pointed that out very clearly and I just wanted to show you kind of and city does support that, and we want to have a city park there. All right, thanks, Jeff. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? All right, commissioners. I move to approve. Second. second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Discussion? I think this is another good example of that, uh, the soft zoning shifts as we go from RS to RD1 to RD2 makes a lot of sense. All right, thank you. I would also commend the owner for taking the um, time to talk to the owners or to the other homeowners around the neighborhood in mitigating any issues, so thank you. I All think right. this will be good for the area just because that those lots have sat there for quite a many years. I mean, we've sold tons of houses out there and they've just sat there. So I think it's something that at least gets something done out there. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Thank you. Item eight, 2734-2015 rezoned from the RS single family residential suburban district to the RD1 twin home duplex residential suburban district for allowed forms located west of South Sertoma, Sertoma Avenue and south of West Stony Creek Street. Uh, the applicant here is Matt Schultz and he is proposing to rezone this 0.44 acre lot uh, and construct a twin home on it. Um, it is located west of South <coughs> Sertoma Avenue and south of West Stony Creek Street. Um, it is sandwiched between uh, some apartment complexes on the north and then, um, excuse me, and then a existing office lot on the east side with single family residential on the west and south. Uh, the proposed zoning does meet the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan. Uh, the proposed RD1 zoning provides a good transition from the existing apartment complex on the north uh, and the existing old office district that will be future development on the east uh, to the existing single family residential homes on the west and the south. Um, and because the subject, subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan, staff does recommend approval of this rezoning request. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Jason. Any questions for Jason? All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? State your name and address. Matt Schultz, 46521, <clears throat> 264th Street in Hartford. And uh, I bought this lot a couple years ago and I haven't, <clears throat> I was gonna build a house on it and I didn't. And so last fall I went and decided that I thought it was a good place for a twin home with the apartments next door and the <clears throat> uh, open lot behind it that was zoned for offices and then take in, into consideration that out the driveways of it, there's the lots across the road don't have any driveway access there. So there will be no, no drive. So I figured it wasn't gonna interfere with much people there. Um, 
<clears throat> last fall I went and talked to all the neighbors around and just knock on their doors and visit with them. Um, a few of them kind of showed some concerns of having, a rent, having it a rental property or whether I was going to sell them. And I'm looking more to build them and sell them than to build them and rent them out. <clears throat> and they just didn't want rent. Some of them just said, you know, they'd rather not have them be a cheaper rental. So, um, and then uh, I, a few people I wasn't able to contact. And so that's where I'm at, I guess. All right. All right. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? All right. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? All right. Seeing none, I'll look for commission action. Madam Chair, motion to approve for discussion. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Oh, one quick thing that I had forgot to mention, that house that I have circled there, we did receive an email from them. Um, they couldn't be at the meeting tonight, and they had some concerns about property values with this rezoning request, so I wanted to make sure we got that on the record. So. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? Much like we saw with item 7, I know from my own personal home shopping experience in the last couple of years, this has been empty, vacant for quite a while. It would be nice to see something applied here, and I think this, again, is a good transition between the single family and the higher density apartments there to the north. I agree with Kurt. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item 9, 2696-2015 conditional use permit in the BCF1 form to allow a funeral home within 250 feet from DD, AD, or MD forms located at the southeast corner of West 81st Street and South Minnesota Avenue. Uh, the applicant here is Dave Erickson with Vandewall Architects. Uh, the Miller Funeral Home would like to construct roughly a 6,200 square foot uh, funeral establishment and associated parking lot in this currently vacant, uh, vacant piece of property. Uh, this site may look a little familiar to you. I believe we approved a conditional use here a couple of years ago under the old ordinance. Um, and then once shape places became effective, that conditional use became null and void. They hadn't started construction or pulled a permit. So now they are back with the similar request to what they had before. Um, the concept plan does indicate uh, two accesses off of 81st Street. Um, and these accesses will be required to be approved by engineering. Um, the proposed funeral establishment should not provide a significant traffic impact to the existing residential neighborhood to the east. Um, most of the traffic will be filtered to 81st in Minnesota um, and then go out on Minnesota south or north. And finally, they will be required a level A and B buffer yard um, on the north and east sides to uh, buffer from the existing single family and multifamily uses. And because uh, the subject application does provide clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed, and the increased traffic should be funneled towards South Minnesota Avenue instead of it through the existing uh, residential neighborhood, staff does recommend approval of this conditional use permit. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Any questions for Jason? All right, thank you. And would the applicant please come forward? I'm Joel Vipon with Miller Funeral Home, 507 South Main. Um, I'm not actively involved in the planning process of this facility, but I can answer any questions about the nature of the facility that uh, you may have. It is designed, uh, as uh, South Dakota funeral law states, that it is a visitation chapel. It is uh, uh, not a facility that will uh, allow us legally to perform preparation and care work such as embalming and or cremation. There will be no facility for uh, those two actions to be there. It's strictly for visitation and funeral ceremonies only. All right, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Sure. Are you then going to keep the facility downtown? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. This is just in addition to uh, the other facilities in the city that we have, one on 41st and Valley View, and then this downtown location right here. Thank you. Joe, again, so you're... Uh, this facility is going to be similar to the one on West 41st Street. 
It is, I believe, uh, from what I've been told, that it may be slightly smaller than the one on 41st and Valley, Valley View, but I don't want to quote that. But it is going to be the same nature of, of structure, uh, basically slab on grade, no, uh, no basement or anything like that. Very nice facility out there. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? All right, seeing none, I would look for commission action, please. Motion to I approve move item approval. <laughs> second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, only that uh, from the testimony, the, the type of uh, facility this is going to be, it probably won't add a great deal of traffic to that future area where there's probably going to be a lot of traffic. So I don't see any problem with this. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Item 10, 2741-2015, alternative site plan to provide an alternative landscape plan to allow 100% of the required street trees in the right of way located at 2000 West 41st Street. Uh, this is an application by Kyle Rafe with Co-op Architecture. Uh, the Verizon Wireless is looking at redeveloping the current Valentino site and constructing a retail store. Um, and they would like to provide their required street trees uh, in the city right away. Uh, the proposed uh, landscaping requirement requires one tree for every 50 foot of frontage uh, for a total of 10 trees on the site. Um, and as the ordinance states, 20% of those trees can be allowed within the city right away. Uh, the applicant is proposing to keep there's three existing mature deciduous trees in the right of way, as well as constructing uh, four additional ones. The existing mature deciduous shade trees, they count two for one, so they will count as six of the 10 required, and then the four additional ones will, will make up the difference and they'll have the 10 that's required by ordinance. Um, and there's also a, a small request on the west side of this. There's an existing retaining wall that's on the property line. Uh, they're looking at keeping that retaining wall on the property line instead of having to move it uh, within the buffer yard. Uh, the existing as well proposed deciduous shade trees in the right of way should provide the necessary front yard landscaping for the redeveloped site. If this application is approved by the Planning Commission, this applicant can retain the three existing mature trees as well as plant four additional deciduous shade trees within the city right away. If the proposed uh, plan is denied, two of these existing mature shade trees will have to be removed, um, along with eight additional trees uh, constructed are placed somewhere within the front yard setback. Um, finally, the existing retaining wall along that west side will have to be demolished also. Uh, because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed, and the proposed front yard landscaping should adequately meet the intent of the ordinance, Staff does recommend approval of this alternative site plan, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Jason. And just to reiterate there, the main reason is because the mature trees already exist. That's the request for this, is that correct? Within the right of way, yes, and okay. we are in the nature of uh, retaining as many existing trees as we can get. All right, any questions for staff? All right, thanks, Jason. Would the applicant please come forward? Kyle Rapp with Co-op Architecture, 300 North Phillips, Suite 120. Um, yeah, as Jason said, that basically we're trying to meet the uh, Shape Places buffered yard requirements and work within what's already there. So as he said on the west side, there's a decorative concrete fence slash retaining wall that's on the property line that meets the buffered yard. It's four foot high, but it's on the property line. So we would have to basically leave that or take that down and then put up another one. So just kind of redundant there on the west side. Then on the east side, um, there's those three large mature shade trees um, that, that form the, uh, kind of can see it there. So um, if we can plant our new ones within the uh, right away, it just uh, saves those trees and also uh, continues that street presence of the trees. All right, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? All right, thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item?
Larry Scott, 704 East 20th Street. I own the property just to the west of the um, two apartment buildings, just west of this property. And the wall they're talking, I don't have a problem with this at all, but the wall that they're talking about taking down, uh, quite a few kids that live in that apartment buildings and people tend to think the parking lot is a through street and they come in there turn around a lot. I was just wondering kind of what kind of buffer were they gonna put up to keep people from going through there and kids, I don't want kids in the, running in their parking lot and things like that. Uh, I was just mainly wondering how that was going to be handled. Sure. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Maybe could the applicant please come forward again and maybe answer that question? Yeah. Unless I'm, maybe I'm confused. The wall will the wall will stay, so there won't be the access. Wall will stay yeah. With that. Yeah. That would be great. We just don't want to move it. We would be required to take it down and then move it back ten feet. So we just want to keep it there. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this item? All right. Elisa Steenbrook at 3208 South Willow. I live four houses um, north on Willow on the east side. And, and I just want to make sure that I understand. So it sounds like the, the request is to keep everything as it is, right? Keep the retaining wall, keep the trees, not to remove anything. Is that correct? Okay. And that's the only thing that's on the table tonight? Okay. I think then I'm just, okay. You're good? All right. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Seeing no one else that would like to address this item, I'll look for commission action. So moved. Second. <laughs> All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think it's great that they want to keep, uh, you know, the existing trees. Uh, I mean, if we took them down and planted new ones, I mean, it makes no sense. Um, so they keep those mature trees and keep the neighborhood, so. Okay, I agree. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Item 11, 2725-2015, initial development plan for the Prairie Creek Memory Care Institutional Campus Plan Unit Development, located at the northeast corner of West 57th Street and South Solberg Avenue. Diane DeCoyer with planning again. Um, the project before you is an initial development plan for the Good Samaritan Society. It's a Prairie Creek memory care. The subject property is 3.59 acres and zoned as an S2 PUD. Um, institutional campus PUD allows for construction of business and community facilities of a limited size, multifamily residential and commercial uses under 25,000 square feet upon approval of a final development plan. Final development plans that are consistent with the approved initial development plan may be reviewed and approved administratively. The property is located northeast of 57th and Solberg. The site is located directly east of Good Sam's National Campus and to the south of existing independent living and twin home and apartments um, by the Good Samaritan Society. The proposed plan indicates an NF2 neighborhood residential facility form to the east it's a one-story, 27,275-square-foot, 32-bed unit memory care facility. Due to the slope of the site, um, sidewalks from 57th are not directly accessible to the structure. Therefore, pedestrians must access it um, coming around to Creekside Circle. Similarly, due to grade changes, a berm and retaining wall will be constructed along 57th, which will also serve as a safety measure um, for the facility's clients. To the west of the facility is the proposed AD1 attached dwelling suburban twin home duplex for future twin homes for independent living clients. The two single story twin home units are planned for 5,500 square feet with two stall garages per unit. The twin homes are noted as future in the next two to five years for construction. A level A buffer yard is required between the NF2 and the AD1 parcels. A level A buffer yard is a 10 foot setback with a two foot berm or a four foot high fence and 20 units of landscaping between them. The applicant is required to submit an alternative parking plan for the reduction of parking spaces. It will also need to be approved by the planning commission. Signed standards for the development will also need to be submitted for review um, 
of the final development plan before a signed permit is granted. Because the subject application complies with the policies and design standards of Shape Soup Place's 2035 comprehensive plan, the development is mutually compat compatible with adjacent existing developments and the initial development plan is consistent with the regulations of the requested PUD district. Staff recommends approval of this request. Thank you, any questions for Diane? Diane, you're saying that they have to come back with an alternative parking plan? Because right they, now they only show 24. Yeah, I think that 24 is correct. And for a facility like this, what is required, um, I think at peak period, they have 12 full-time staff, um, staff and volunteers. And then because it's a 32 bed facility, it would be one um, parking stall per bed. But again, this is from memory care unit. So um, most of those people would not be driving as you might imagine. So they will come back with an alternative site plan to reduce the number of parking. Well, I guess, you know, I, the reason I was saying that and I'll bring it up now is the fact that that only allows for 12 visitors for 32 mm -hmm. beds also. Otherwise, there's no parking left. I mean, that seems a little short, so, but they got to come back with an alternative But they have plan. to come back, yeah, and they'll come back before you for Us. approval on that. All right, thank yeah. you. All right, thanks, Dan. Would the applicant please come forward? Ed Lund, Coke Hazard Architects. Uh, Greg Gamble is uh, out of town tonight. We are the ones that developed the plan and this entire area. And as far as answer the question on the parking, uh, there is Good Samaritan Society owns this entire uh, area. There's uh, skilled uh, nursing, uh, there's uh, senior housing, there's twin homes, and there's, uh, as you can see on, on the plans, there's uh, additional parking to the north. And our primary concern was that uh, these are memory care facility where people are not going to be driving. You know, they are managed 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I agree there are, are only 12 places, but there is parking across the street, and we will provide that alternative parking facility. Diane did a superb job as far as what the plans are and what the development is, so any questions I could ans answer? All right, thank you. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and address this item? All right, seeing none, I'll look for commission action. Madam Chair, move to approve item 11. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Item 12, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by revising planning and zoning application fees. Good evening, Jeffrey Schmidt again for the planning items. Um, with the new house bill that was just passed this legislative session, beginning in July, we have to have new signs posted for all our rezonings and conditional uses. Um, we have a mock-up of the sign, and it is a very large sign that we will have, okay? Um, but Based upon the size that's been required by state law, it has to be 24 inches by 18 inches with bold lettering. To get something like that, that's paper to withstand, um, we're gonna put it on core board and then put it on a metal stand. So based upon that, our fees are going up. Um, they're going up for $75 for conditional uses and $150 $150 for change of zones. That's four signs for your conditional uses because they got to go on four corners. And there's eight signs for your change of zones because you have two public hearings they have to list. Um, I've given this information out to all the developers, applicants that we basically have in the community. And this sign's been down at our customer service counter for at least a month. Um, so the community knows about it. But I think in general, most of the community members will be supportive because now they don't have to pound stakes in anymore and they won't have to build their own sign boards, but the costs will be going up. So with that, any questions? Madam Chair, is that the exact size? 
That's the actual size, correct. They're going to be orange and yellow. Yellow is the conditional uses, and oranges are the rezonings. All right, any other questions? All right. Thank you, Jeff. Is there anyone else that would like to address this item? Anybody? Okay. I look for <laughs> commission action. Move to approve item 12. A second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item 13. A resolution of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, revisiting the project plan and boundary for Tax Increment Finance District 2014A, Tyler Block, TIF. Hey, good evening, Planning Commission. Uh, Brent O'Neill with the Community Development uh, Department. Here to talk about an application that the Planning Commission approved regarding TIF at its uh, March 2015 meeting. It was uh, uh, shown up here on the screen, the boundary we looked at. I'll give a little bit more of a summary of the project, uh, but really one of the issues that came up at that meeting was regarding the boundaries and the properties uh, that were included, including those uh, both owned and controlled by the developer uh, who proposed projects in the district, as well as other property owners. After uh, uh, the opportunity to speak uh, more directly with property owners, the opportunity to speak uh, more directly with the TIF applicant, uh, it was decided uh, that it was best uh, to make a modification to the TIF boundary. So what you see on the screen is on the left, the boundary that was approved uh, originally, and then on the right, our revised boundaries or our proposed revisions to the boundaries. Um, given your past approval and given the, the beautiful weather outside, I do intend to be fairly brief. So I have one more slide and then have brought my other presentation with uh, so we can certainly at your discretion review any other point uh, that you'd like to or that was discussed that night. Again, this is a really kind of a uh, unique project downtown. It will result in the demolition of a, a property and the reuse of a uh, parcel uh, just north of the Sunshine property. Above you have the rendering of uh, kind of the four-story 82-unit uh, workforce housing project. The total uh, project is going to be about $12 million. We received a request of $1.6 million for that. The TIF plan, um, uh, as uh, proposed then and proposed today, uh, supports $1.5 million, and that is you know, acceptable to all parties involved. Um, also wanted to point out on the drawing there, again, showing the revised boundaries, Project 1 is the project that uh, really is the impetus for TIF. Project two is a future project contemplated by the developer, and that project would just only support uh, the increment potentially available for the district to pay down of the district. With that, I would uh, open up for questions or certainly I'll let you know that both Kevin Keating and Norm Drake uh, representing the project are here as well. All right, thank you. Right. You're saying that the TIF request is not going up, right? Correct, correct. I wanted to confirm that. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the very little change with the plan, really, other than the, the reference to the properties. Okay. So, <clears throat> Madam Chair, may I ask some questions? <clears throat> so, and I apologize, Brent, I wasn't at the, sure, yeah. um, on the commission in the March. So, when I look at the project plan on page five, I see uh, five parcels. Who owns all those parcels? Uh, the... Uh, two gentlemen I referenced, Norm Drake and uh, Kevin Keating, they either own, represent, or have control of those properties. Okay, yep. so they're not owned by other property owners. Correct. Okay. Um, and then I have a, um, some questions, uh, four questions on the project plan itself. So if you could educate us, what is, what is the definition of workforce um, level housing? Sure. Um, I think workforce housing is really tied to that level of housing that's that's both affordable and geared towards economic development. Okay. So those, uh, uh, and I, I know Norm and Kevin might have a better answer than me, but you know those those uh, 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 people that are really looking for that type of housing. Okay, I can save that question for them. Sure. Um, and then on page five of the of the project plan, can you clarify the um, public benefit eligible costs? I see there's there's one point on page five, it's $1.5 million. And then when you turn the page, um, 
Then there's some additional money for financing, professional fees, administration fees, sure. which is $2.4 million. And then can you, when you're doing that, um, on the slide you have a 1.6 million. So there's three different numbers. Sure. So can you clarify sure. what those costs are as why, and then also what the difference is? Sure, the 1.6 is really the request, the project financing to do the project. Okay. They won the sources of funding they need for the project. Uh, financing costs are eligible. Um, so what you have on page five is a listing of all the costs that are proposed to be um, uh, paid for. Okay. Uh, on page six, uh, that second line, financing costs are the amounts that would be eligible as far as financing costs. And then um, uh, the last item there, grants, is really a summary. It's, you'll see it's a line for line match for the other uh, items on page five. And that's something that we do that's allowed by statute, uh, really that gives the city uh, and, and uh, the parties involved uh, the flexibility in administering the TIF. Okay, but the TIF request is 1.6 or? The TIF request is, is 1.6 of, of, 12, of $12 million uh, project costs that they will need uh, to do this project. They're asking for 1.6 of that uh, to be included through TIF. Okay. And then my next question is, um, so the developer um, is going to invest um, $12 million now? Uh, the, the total project will be $12 million. Okay. Uh, 1.6 of that will be invested through tax increment financing. Okay. And so the assessed value would be? I might have to reference my... Uh, notes here. Sure. Um, a little over seven million. I believe we have uh, seven okay. point four in the staff report. Okay. And then my last question is: Has um, in the project plan um, or in your analysis, is there a quantified economic development? Or is this like, are you, it, I know that you can be blight or economic development, or are you saying that it's one or both? Sure. It's, it, um, well, I think in this particular case, I mean, we really feel uh, in our valuation that it, it certainly takes what you consider blighted property sure. and also provides that economic development benefit okay. to the community. So, yes. Okay. But the economic development portion has not been quantified. Uh, no, okay. uh, uh, I mean, I, we didn't reference that uh, terribly fine. specifically in the plan. I guess in summary, I think this is a great project. I, that's, uh, you know, between Sunshine and the post office, and there's, um, you know, I, there's a lot of opportunity for improvement in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the neighbors would appreciate it. Um, this looks like a great project, so again, I commend the, um, the developer for bringing this forward to the city for a TIF project. All right, thank you. Madam Chair. Oh, yes. Oh, I've got questions too, Madam Chair. Uh, Brent, I forgot what I was going to say now. You talk about two projects. Mm -hmm. Is this amount of TIF dependent on both projects going through? You talk about the affordable housing, and then you kind of said then there might be a project coming down the road. Yeah. If that project doesn't happen, does the 1.6 not happen or the 1.55? There certainly is a potential for that, and as this TIF has been contemplated, uh, one of the advantages, uh, so to speak, from the city perspective is with the developer uh, on the first project also being the developer on the second project, the developer is willing to uh, basically take the risk that project two doesn't happen, so to speak. Okay. Uh, you and I have had a discussion in the past about a previous TIF. It's my understanding that a TIF, once awarded, is good for five years. The developer has five years to... Right, there's a five-year window, yeah. Five-year window, yeah. A change of usage. Mm -hmm. If we have a TIF presented to us as an affordable housing project, a couple years goes by, if that change of usage were to change, does your office, the city council, get a chance to relook at that 
Yeah. Sure, sure. If, if I understand the question, if if it, the project at the onset or before it commenced has changed, absolutely. Um, is, is that a requirement? In other words, uh, yeah, we're saying this is going to be eligible for a TIF. It's one point yeah. five million dollars, yeah. but what's being represented to us changes. Do they yeah. have to come back? For if the scope that. changes, I think one of the evaluations we make is does the plan in any way contemplate that change? And if the plan had not contemplated that change, uh, then it would be our recommendation. It would have so to come back. So it would depend on your office as far as interpreting the change? It would, as we'd also consult with our legal team, and we just, again, really interpret whether that change altered the intent or not. If I can go back to the first question, what I'm thinking here is that part of the increase in taxes is going to be dependent on both projects, not just one. If the one just happens and the taxes, the amount that goes up doesn't service the 1.5, at that point it's the developer's problem uh, to pay it out of pocket, I suspect. Yeah, I mean, the, the obligation of the city is really what, what's generated by the TIF, so that's accurate. Okay. Thank you, Brent. You're welcome. Great, thank you. Any other questions? All right, could the applicant please come forward? Please state your name and address and if there's anything else you'd like to add. Kevin Keating, 1512 North 133rd Street, Omaha, Nebraska. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Really, same same project, same concept as what we were planning before we were before you. Uh, the only the only difference was is after we had this meeting, we had some feedback that we hadn't received beforehand about the TIF district, and we decided rather than argue it, we would just change the district to accommodate uh, the request. So ev everything else is pretty much as it was. If there's any other questions? Be glad to help. I'll ask my same, Madam Chair. May I ask? The same question, what do, the definition of workforce, um, or affordable workforce. <coughs> workforce housing. housing. Yep. And what does that mean for like level of rent or cost of buying a unit, et cetera? Yeah, um, th these, are, these are for rent, they're not for sale. Okay. The, um, the affordability uh, for this project with, the, with respect to the tax credit units is 60% of area median income. And we're trying to uh, target tenants that are working downtown, thus the workforce housing. Um, tenants that can afford, you know, rents at that, at that 40 to 50, 60% rents, not below, we're not targeting very low income in this. Uh, it's kind of the nature of the financing that we're using that prevents us from doing that. So um, that's, the, that's the income targets that we're, that we're trying to reach. Okay. Madam Chair? Kevin, are, are you going to approach the state to try to get some tax credits to help complete this project? Yes. Okay. When it was originally presented to us, that wasn't the situation. I guess we were told that uh, they were going to go through the state. Uh, it was on a bonding type of that's, different that's, program. It, it, and that's, that's, that's the same. We're, we're, we're not going through the competitive 9% process. The, uh, the 4 percent tax credit is available through the tax exempt bond. You make an application to the South Dakota Housing Development Authority for a 4 percent bond. If it's approved, the credits come with it, basically. Is there a limit to that 4 percent tax money? Uh, um, there, there is a limit, but it's, uh, this is a very underutilized product. There, um, there hasn't been a, an applicant, well, there hasn't been a successful application under the 4 percent program since the last time I did it in 2008. And I might be confusing it with uh, someone I've had some, some experience with, but that's a very, very, the one I've had experience with is very competitive. There's usually that's, not enough That's the 9% credit. credit. The 9% credit is very competitive, uh, and, and it requires, in order to, in order to be uh, successful in those applications, you've got to more severely discount your rents, you know, target the lower income tenants. Um, as a result, you get more credits. Under the four percent, you're getting you know less than half as many credits, but it's not a competitive process. So there are some rent limits then. Once you, if yes. you were to get this credit, yeah. it's it's still it's based on uh, yep. median income. We're still subject to the sixty percent rent limits. That's what I thought it was, Kevin. Yep. I got a little confused for yep. a minute there. No problem. Thank you. Anything else? 
Any other questions? I just have one other question. The $12 million, is that for both projects or just one of the That's projects? That's this project. That's the first project. The first project. Yes. And is the second project, is that the $6 million project then? Or? Uh, the, se the second project is, uh, did, did, was it six? Five? Five, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from, from our perspective, uh, having the t knowing that we've got the TIF on that project and that's eligible is kind of an incentive for the developer to, to see that that gets done because sure. it's going to help the first project. So there's incentive for us to make sure that that second project gets done. Okay. Well, if you're investing $18 million or $17 million and the economics in this TIF are at a tax assessment of $10 million, I think that's very, very conservative. So I think that if particularly if you build two projects, you should have no problem paying out this TIF. So. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address this item? All right, seeing none, I'll look for commission action. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to designate the project boundary for tax increment district 2014A as proposed for submission to the city council. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. And I think now we need a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, one more. Maddie, we, we need you to, to yep. do a motion to approve the plan because that is changing a little bit. Okay. The project plan. Yep. Okay. Madam Chair, I'd also like to make a motion to adopt the project plan as proposed for tax increment district 2014A for submission to the city council also. All right. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Madam Chair, Danny Brown from the uh, attorney's office. Um, now that you've designated the district, you should also make a motion as to whether or not this planning commission wants to recommend approval. So that's the second motion you should make now. With respect to the district. Oh, that's the one. Th this oh, the second line on okay. okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Want me to do it? Okay. Madam Chair, okay. I'd like to make a motion to recommend forming the tax increment district 2014A. Okay, just to clarify, this is the third I just want to be sure this is the third item being voted on here. That's what I'm counting right now. It wouldn't be a third item. It's the, it's the first item with respect to the district that has two parts. They voted on um, designating the district, which was a vote that passed. And then the second motion after that should be a motion as to whether or not they want to recommend approval to form that district to the city council. D didn't you guys do that? I'm just trying to clarify because I've I've heard two things already voted on. The two things that were voted on, one was the formation of the district, and then the other one was the adoption of the plan. Okay, so now this is a third thing to vote on. Third motion. Well, I'm just trying to clarify for 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 the record to to make sure that everyone is following. Okay. Well, in order to clarify, you passed the motion, designated the district. That's what I heard, and that's what you guys voted on unanimously and approved. And then you went straight into voting on the plan, which you unanimously approved. And so at this point, you'd like to give a, you should give a recommendation to the city council as to whether or not the city council should oh. approve the district and you, or deny the district. And you should make it, and then you should vote on whether or not you should um, on our recommendation approve to the plan, the recommendation to approve the plan, or not approve the plan. All right. So essentially, what you're doing is, before you make a recommendation to what the city council should do, you have to designate the boundaries in order to make a recommendation as to whether or not it should be approved. And then once you do that, you need to adopt a plan. And then you need to make a recommendation as to whether or not that plan should be approved by the city council. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> when I made the first motion to designate it, I also should have incorporated the motion to recommend 
to the city council forming the tax increment district for the item number one on this. So now your motion is to? Uh, my motion is to recommend forming the tax increment district. All right, second. we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have to do the plan now. Yep. And now, Madam Chair, um, I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval of the project plan for tax increment district 2014A. All right. We have a motion. Second. And a second for approval of the project plan. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. And I think we are one, good. One more motion, is there? To adjourn. And now I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. We have. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned.